Welcome to the Select Board Board <laughs> of Health Sewer me, Commission meeting on, that. <laughs> on September 27, 2023 at 6 p.m. here in the municipal offices uh, of our municipal town hall. It is a hybrid Zoom meeting. This meeting will be held in the hybrid fashion with opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation participation, I cannot talk today, right. I've been yelling too much, is being provided as a courtesy to the public. The meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices and in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Um, welcome. And uh, Dan, thank you for coming. And Chris. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. So we are going to um, go over our warrant with Dan, our moderator. So. All right. You want to go one at one at a time? Yeah. How do you want to do this, Dan? You have any any areas? Of Whatever's concern? easiest for you all. It might just be sense to go through one at a time, and we can breeze through the ones that are easy and see if there's any identify any issues. Sure. Okay. Well, um, Article One is um, twenty uh, two thousand two hundred and forty dollars for um, in an unanticipated bill for added uh, yeah. district placement transportation. I don't see that that's any problem. I only have one thing that you'll see as an addition, Dan, and it's gonna say prior year. Um, I have to add that. Um, oh, prior Brenda year. Brenda asked me to add prior year after the word unanticipated. For article one? For article one. Okay. Okay. Um, article two is $3,000 for the purchase of automated um, uh, defibrillator yep yep to be at the transfer station that makes sense do you have a problem with that dan at all no not at all no no okay uh 9500 towards installation of pedestrian crossing lights this is the our match for the grant right yeah there's a grant that was received to do some signage at the intersection of north main street and pleasant street where the crossing is mostly for the crossing guards. Great. Okay. Um, article four is $89,410 for our um, MVP match. Um, that's for the, that is inclusive of the elementary school and um, Leary lot, right? It's, it's for the MVP action grant. So it okay. includes those two things. Yep. Plus the. Uh, right, points. Chris? Plus 2.0, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay. Do we plan to use yep. free cash for that? Do we know? Say that again? Do we plan to use free cash for, for these yes, items? Yes, okay. I believe so. Right oh. now, that's that's what we have. Okay. Um, Article 5 is 250000 towards the HVAC system, which is coming out of free cash versus the ARPA money. We had only appropriated 100000 didn't we, from the ARPA? We did a, 110. Uh, we did like a hundred thousand, I think, from ARPA initially, yeah. And we we're really, I think, going to trans. I mean, depending on free cash or what happens, we would, uh -huh. we would use that. I think this has gone to capital, or they're going to have it. They have, they have the application. They have not met. We have not okay. set up a meeting. All right. We have time for that. Mm -hmm. Um. Article six is just uh transferring the money from the opioid um, money. We I set think. up the account already last yes. meeting. Yes, so I yeah, we set up the account. This allows, so this is the permission request to dedicate opioid funds into the account. We hadn't set that up before, Dan, just so you know. Um, but then we also have, and I don't know, I put a note in here. I don't, the next article, so they're related to each other. We also had received funds at the end of the fiscal year when we closed 23. Um, so we need to make sure that we take those funds and dedicate them into the into the overall 
hold in place. So that stabilization fund, I don't know if they should go and what, I don't know if they're going to change order. I just wanted to make sure that I let everybody know that one is overall permission to put the funds in there. And then the other one is to allocate the 32,000 that rolled into free cash that were opioid funds that we received in 23. They have specific spending requirements, Dan. So we're putting them into the opioid account and we're probably gonna work with Greenfield and Montague um, together on some kind of project like um, Eliza's Watch or Something I don't know. at a later date. Yeah, something at a later date that makes sense, uh, that's more proactive than just buying Narcan or whatever. So at the annual meeting, we just established the account, but this now authorizes depositing into it. Is that essentially yeah. yes. accurate? Yeah. And okay. then we're moving, and then the Article 7 is actually moving the money that came into the general fund to the, the account. The so far thirty two thousand two hundred and fourteen have come in, but it it is specific. Um, I mean, you can't just spend it on anything. So, for from my knowledge, Article Six, um, it says uh, you know to dedicate all or a percentage. You know, um, would we be doing anything other than one hundred percent going into that fund? You know, I think the I only think you reason you can only use it for certain things. Right. Yeah, you really can only use it for certain it. things. So I think the idea is to just leave it. There was some flexibility because this is a recommended language. Right. From it's the, not from the state. Yeah. And, and so that you have some flexibility because over time, this is supposed to get as more it, money. As it comes in, we may want to yeah. take 5000 and buy Narcan instead of waiting and taking a two-thirds vote at ten, town meeting to spend I, it. Could be, yeah. I mean, at least 25% of whatever comes in has to go in this fund regardless. Oh, well, that's what we're saying. Or that's what people are saying that they yeah. want to do across yeah. the state. Because like I said, this is like DPH yeah. language. So you can group it together. Right. Do something. But then this would allow us to do So something. if... Uh, Say say another hundred thousand came into the general fund. We could put some of this into the stabilization account, no less than twenty five percent, so twenty five thousand. But we might want to hold out, make sure everybody has a free Narcan or whatever. Mm -hmm. I I don't. The problem is you need nar you should be doing some kind of training with that right, too. Right. So some training should, classes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that some of the. How you want to spend that is a little bit different. Right. And and if it's in here, then you need an annual meeting or a special town meeting to get two thirds that. to specifically if we put 75 aside into what other account? Well, we, no, we, 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 we just, just say we transfer. Gas. Yeah. Say we decided um, that we want to do Narcan and yeah. Narcan training. Yeah. So we got $100,000. We moved 25000 mandatory into this each year. Each year. But that gives us seventy five to do the training by Narcan, yeah, or, or whatever then, the dollar amount is. And then yeah. we decide. Well, we only ended up spending ten thousand, so we put the other so sixty five back into. So the, it seems like annual town meeting because the money every comes year. into the general fund. Correct. So every year at at uh, annual town meeting, we'll be putting a portion of it. Mm. Uh, mm -mm. I don't think so. I'm what, not sure, but let's see if if Lisa says anything. I think this is intended to be similar as what we did with the SCEMS rental mm -hmm. income. So you, you're you saying that once we've set up this account, once we do it, it will just automatically go in there? I think so, yeah. But mm -hmm. all of it won't go well, that's, that's what you guys have to decide. Right. And so to Dan wanted to- I think that. I'm saying this or trying to understand the same thing. So the, those are two different things to me. So if, if all yeah. the money has to first go into- um, the stabilization account and then funds come out. As Trevor said, I think you then need votes, right? Every time you go to yeah, take it out, but two -thirds, if right. you don't put it in, where else would it go? I mean, it, it can't just, could you put 75% into the general fund and just start using that without any authority other than select board determination? Is that I think you have to use it for specific things, but There's, that's a good question to ask Lisa because right. even I don't understand all the nuances of this, Dan. Uh, there are no, there are certain restrictions. It's a hundred percent restricted. But I think it would be the select board's authority as to what we spend that seventy-five percent on, or whatever. It is. It is. It's a hundred percent our decision what we decide what we want to spend on. That's why it's well, good that we're also board of health because we then we'll have a little. Yeah. Bit so it sounds like it's a hundred percent, but not relative to the 
25 percent that that has to come back oh. if you want to take anything out of stabilization that's sweet the the i mean the fun, uh, our it's our decision 100 percent our decision as select board board of health only on the 75 percent that doesn't get automatically put, put in, in right yeah. because it but it does say may not be less than 25 percent so i guess some, somehow town meeting has to decide should that stay at 25 percent where automatically 25 comes in like so we get a disbursement of a hundred thousand i know that's high we're never going to get that much but they give us a check for a hundred thousand automatically 25 goes into the capital this, this stabilization right. account Seventy five thousand hangs out in general fund for the year. And then it's the select board's authority where that where what funding we'd want to do with that money to address, you know, opioid crisis over that year. But then I think when you get to annual town meeting, while that money is hanging there all year, we, we would then need to decide what's left over. Do we want to just roll it all in? Yes, you have to roll, decide whether you're going to whatever you're going to put back in would at have annual. to go in at annual town or, meetings. Or take it out at annual town meeting. Town meeting, I mean, you don't need to have, it doesn't say annual town meeting, but it it will require a town two thirds town meeting vote. So we'd have to have a special mm -hmm. town meeting if we wanted to pull it out once it's I mean, gone. That's, that's all, I, I mean, I think I'll, what you decide, but it seems like that we need some input from Lisa. It, it seems contrary that it does. And, exactly. and I don't have any problem with it, but I'm just saying it seems contrary that you can spend 75% of it, but the quarter that's left would all of a sudden need two thirds vote in town meeting. It seems like it. Right. Well, but because it's. And, and maybe that's correct. I just. Yeah. Well, it's because it's a stabilization account, Dan. Yeah. That's why it needs two thirds. But. I think it still has. But it does seem weird. Yeah, it's. Confusing. I know. I know it's weird. Well, the whole I'm gonna the ask whole Lisa. settlement is weird, mm -hmm. and it's very restrictive. That's why we're just putting the money in the bank because I mean, you know, into the account because you can't, you, you don't have enough to do anything with yet, and and it's so restrictive at this point. We're figuring that in a year or two that will probably loosen up some of the requirements, what you can use it for. But that will be a topic at town meeting, what that percentage should be. This is just, I know, but this is DPH language. If Lee, anyone wants to change it, I'm, no one cares. Right. We I don't, don't care. Just I don't like care. Because we don't have, we don't have any overwhelming ideas. I mean, uh, Trevor knows someone that had done this, like, alert watch, the disposable watch that. But if I don't some, know if he even continued with it yet. You know, yeah. but it was an idea. And I brought it up with Greenfield. And we, and Greenfield and Montague, if we combine our pots with Shootsbury, because Shootsbury actually has a lot of uh, opioid money like we do, um, we're number three, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. But... It is. It's based on prescriptions, though, that were written. Okay. So um, Thank you. Not, not to dwell on it, but it, it seems like just reading Article 6 that somebody's going to have to make a motion to either dedicate 25% or some other percentage. In, to be allocated to the um, the stabilization account. I mean, I, I agree with that. It's just strange the way it reads. It says to see if the town will dedicate all a percentage, which may not be less than 25%. So it seems like. Yeah. It's arbitrary. Somewhere yeah. it either needs to be 25% that the, that the select board is asking to go into there or a different. It seems like the town decides what the percentage is. And it has to be at least twenty five percent, but I don't know who comes up with that number. But right, right. Um, we can, you know what we could ask uh, finance if they have an idea. Well, the I other thing is, is it. this language I got from Lisa. We yeah. passed over this at annual, Dan. Um, mm -hmm. so I just wrote myself a note to ask her a couple yeah. of questions about it. Flush that, and certainly out. I could do it through the email stream if you want. That way, you get an answer too directly from her. Yeah, and and on Article Seven is the thirty-two two one four. It's just twenty-five percent of what you already have in general fund, or where does no. that number come from? It's okay. all the money 100%. we received. Hundred percent. Okay, we, we got it last year, so I, we're thinking just put it right in one hundred percent in to get it yeah. started. Yeah, we're gonna, I just we don't have any idea. I just wonder if yeah, I just wonder if it should continue to be a hundred percent until you until you start know. to come up with a plan on how you want to use it, and then we could always. 
ratchet back once we understand I'm, Article I'm 6 a little better. To... Do you want to just change it to 100%? So... I, I'm fine with that too, because I don't really want to, I mean, we're not going to do anything this year anyways, right? I think, and then so- I don't foresee us doing anything for a couple of years. By annual town meeting or next, yeah. next annual town meeting, we could get a plan on saying, okay, well, now we know how we're using it. When it comes into us, we're going to take 50% and run this program with it. And the other 50% is going to be Truth, in the, Truthfully, in there. we're so- but Leave it at- we're still trying to sort out COVID, yeah. the COVID vaccine. So yeah. I don't see us figuring out the right. S- same thing. Same thing Trevor is saying, but it seems like if you don't have any plans for this year, that at annual meeting right. we're going to be asking to move everything in the general fund to stabilization anyway, right? Because right. it's got to go I agree. somewhere. By- why don't Maybe we? Um, yep. Why don't we have Lisa re- rewrite this for a hundred per- to move all of it? We can just decide in the motion. We can decide to move all. Okay. Of it. We'll just move out because it may, it seems to me based on listening to you guys talk about it, if we're going to move all of the 32 to 14, yeah, it makes sense to consider putting all of it in there. And the worst that happens is we take it back to town meeting. Yeah. To we, yeah. We, so for transparency to, sake, to Dan's Absolutely. point, it's completely transparent. There right, should Dan? be everybody decide on what we do with it at town meeting. Yep. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, then Article eight. 8 is the classification. Yes. So that's a change, Dan, that um, reflects a reclassification of a position. It's the assistant town clerk's position. Um, and that's been, it went through the personnel board and it was recommended by the select board, which I didn't put in there, but probably should have. <laughs> and that would be, you could highlight E, right? And that's um, where the assistant e, town clerk yes. is now under E. Do you want me to highlight it? Or no, I guess not. I mean, it just maybe maybe the note, like you said, you know, we usually this, this do notes. went through right personnel. Do yeah, you board. want me to put the recommendation from the select board as well? Sure. Dan? Oh, sorry. I think that's fine. Just so I understand though, everything on this chart is the same as approved at annual meeting, except for something in E and F yeah. or so what was reclassified was the assistant town clerk's position from a grade C to a grade E. Okay. But that's the only change. That's, that's the, only the only change. You know what? I Why don't we highlight that somehow? Yeah. Can we highlight that? Yeah. And so that when Dan says everything is the same, except for this is changed, this one's changed. Mm-hmm. Usually I put that in notes, but I can do what I did was a call out with a the last time we looked at this, when we did the town clerk treasure collector split, Dan, um, I had a I had a notation mark, like a symbol mark that had a note on it. Do you want me to do that or do you want me to? Because if yeah. I no, like, I think it's just helpful you know, just to it's a big chart and everybody knows nothing else is changing and that's yeah. okay. the representation. So it just makes it easier. Yeah, it's okay. great. It works. Yeah, we don't want to open up anything else. Um no, nine. Nine is a dog. It's no um, questions on this, but do you have any questions? What do you have? Well, for? my question was, um, I'm fine with like, well, so I, I really wanted to keep like all the, the nine dollar pickup and the five dollar no dog and the ten, you know, the fees and stuff out of a bylaw and put it into a like a regulation, but that you could alter when you needed to but i'm i'm i don't want to fight that battle so i'm okay just leaving you it you can't you have to leave it in the bible all right so that's the answer the other one is uh over on f on page uh, 5 of 9 yes are the fees that we need to charge people if they don't if they don't register their dog within 30 days 60 days and uh whatever 90 days it's like from 50 to 100 to 300 dollar fine we know we all we had was a fifty dollar fine before. Right. We none of us on the board want to charge any of these things, and we wanted to get an answer from Lisa because this was like dictated by the state that we must charge these people this amount of money. And and our whole idea is to like getting people to register their dog. I'd rather have them register a dog late for fifty bucks than not at all for three hundred. You know, or just it just seems like it's so punitive to some extent it is um but we actually had reached out to lisa to set see if we could set up a meeting so we could talk about this because chris and i had talked about it we know the board doesn't like those numbers we know that um they're high 
Yeah. But there's a reason there, there's a correlation between what you charge and the increases that happen. So we want a some clarification from Lisa yeah. about that. I just want to try and figure that out because no other town charges those fees. Looking at that last chart, when our town assistant town clerk kind of went through and proposed this change was to try and make it a little more uh, one to bring in a little bit more money for the actual registering of dogs to cover the cost, but two to kind of make the the fees a little more um, reasonable because mm -hmm. I don't know. They were it's, just... uh, it's none of my business at all, but it, it seems like it would be uh, helpful if it said up to or in the discretion of. So yeah. I'm not sure that someone has authority, for example, to waive the 300 at this point if they're dealing with a hardship or obviously service dogs and things are accepted. But yep. if they're working with someone of a, a marginal income and, and they're able to say, hey, get this done, we can waive these fees to some extent if you do it by next Friday. Yeah. Once you set these, it almost seems like I, yeah. I don't. It would be a dangerous precedent for someone not to uh, charge what what's in the bylaw. But that's that's beyond my role. But just I, as a citizen. Yeah. So if we could find out maybe from Lisa, do we have discretion uh, of the board or somebody, um, and if those those fees are are must. I think it's I think it's too high. Yeah. It is. I mean, it, we were so undercharging before, and then, yeah. and then you go to the other extreme. That doesn't seem like that's too swift. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Article 10, um, separation of the trustees and Tilton Fund. Did you did you have any questions on that, Dan? Um, I don't have any questions as a moderator. I just think that um, it has the potential to have a lot of questions asked. I know there's been you know, scuttlebutt everywhere for years over this. And mm -hmm. um, I just think someone should be prepared to explain with some specificity what what we're doing or what what you're doing and, and why. I, I think I understand it personally, but um, I think it's a great idea. But, um, you know, right. there's questions as to who owned. i not getting into any of it, but yep. if that's what this is designed to do, I think I just anticipate some questions on it if if yeah maybe so, a, a small so what you're depth. saying is we need to have the tilton library trustees prepared to talk to it or, yeah. i mean i don't know if the petition has been prepared to go to the court or where where this is at in the process but what's right. going to be specifically asked and why it's being asked for clarification mm -hmm. just seems like somebody should be prepared to speak on yep yeah. okay. is tilton is this a town action or is this tilton that's taking the lead on the petition or the who's trustees, filing the trustees requested yeah. we add it so they're taking the lead that's why i said they should be prepared to, even yeah. i don't understand well, it all dan we we had reckoned lisa had recommended it several years back when we were trying to figure out who owned it and then they when they did all the deep dive into the into the property you know the owner of the building and all that and realized that over the years everybody kind of globbed together and trustees were the same as as um you know as the tilton fund and, and all of that got mixed up and there was too many people so they started to separate all that out through elections to kind of get that more uh based on the original language and but i, I agree i think there will be quite a few questions and if maybe the tilton um trustees could maybe have a, a pre-printed printed paragraph just explaining like hey this is the reason we are we are doing this over the years things got kind of muddled together we're trying to do get this for clarity for everybody and, and follow the law and the way the trust was intended. And um, just so that people would have a clear vision mm -hmm. as to what we're doing would be okay. great. And again, just uh, is, are these town legals that'll be incurred or is this something that comes out of the Tilton uh, where? I don't, I don't know. Just so, probably a question that'll come up. So it just uh, seems like yep. we should. So say that again, Dan, so I can type it out. I just don't know who was going to pay for the action. I, if it's a complicated legal oh, matter, and I just don't know. I just know this I'm, raises I'm questions sometimes. That, so. Um, so, uh, I, the trustees, it, right? Yeah, the trustees are I would hope that the trustees would pay for it. But because I, remember, they're, great they're incurring their own lawyer. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that was my, my problem was because yes. they weren't even talking to Lisa, our town lawyer. Yes. So... Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. So I'm assuming that they would be paying Dan. So okay. the board, the select board appoints the trustees. I am sorry to not know all the details here. 
So no, no, I think they're elected and then permanent no. trustees, I think, are appointed from the elected trustees, right? Correct. It's after very concerning, Dan. Well, so after- where does where does this dovetail with the town where we need to take this vote? What 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 is it that you need to all do? I think it's related why can't the trustees. To- it's related to the trust. I think it's related to the trust, the, which the town. the town has connection to. Um, but again, to your point, Dan, it's not very clear why we would need to do. We may have to go back and look at the opinion Lisa gave it gave the town like six years ago about yeah, it. Yeah, there is a good a good opinion she wrote with all the back background and history. Um, that might be good to have with it, maybe even. Unfortunately, she had a select board meeting and a town meeting she had to do tonight. That's why she couldn't join us. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. That's why okay. I have some notes so I can ask some questions. Yeah. That's a good thought. We should flush that out. <laughs> yeah. Have, have things printed out. People have full yeah. understanding of why we're doing it. And if it needs to wait till regular town meeting, so be it. Yeah. If, if it's not clear, I, I agree. If it's not clear, we should not keep well, it. Yeah, we'll pass over if they don't. Yeah, if they're not okay. ready. Okay. Okay. But if I it, can share that with Nancy Maynard and Candace. All right. Um, Article Eleven is senior housing, uh, land purchase. This is um, the property that we're ne- supposed to be negotiating. Did you reach out, Casey, to the property owner? No, oh, I sent you an email and asked you about that. Um, I did reach out to Lisa though. Um, so. I think we're within, there was a couple of questions that had come up, Dan. I did, the reason you don't see any details in here is because I initially drafted it, not knowing whether we were going to end up um, having a specific, having some sort of a uh, agreement between a property owner and the town by the time we got to the point we had to publish. So Carolyn and I had a conversation about that on Friday. Um, There was a clarification I needed from Lisa that I got this morning. Um, We basically need to have something in writing between the town and the property owner contingent upon town meetings approval to make sure that we hold whatever price we are, is agreed upon um, before we finalize the language of the article. And Carolyn and I talked about that on Friday. You want me to reach out to her? Yes. Okay. All right. So we could set up. Um, there has been some communication between the property owner, um, but there it wasn't totally clear until I had a conversation with both Lily as the senior housing chair and Carolyn last week, um, last Friday about it. Okay. Okay. Casey, we should probably try to sneak uh, a, either an email chain or a phone conference with Lisa in because I have I'm not understanding the, you know, the two thirds majority on land act. There seems like there's a lot there without a purchase and sale or anything at this point. So I just want to make sure we're clear Absolutely. So, because I don't, I, I don't know if people are going to, I mean, it, the way I read this vote is, do, do you get the census would ever have to come back before town meeting or this would do it if you had a purchase, if you had some type of an agreement? If we had one, I think we could do it because when we did the Previer purchase, the North Main Street lot purchase, that was a conditional purchase and sale. Um, The purchase and sale was drafted and ready when town meeting happened, but the entire purchase was contingent upon town meetings vote. And I did ask, I didn't, I asked that question separately because I was asking Lisa just process wise, I wasn't sure. So if you want me to write this out, I can send her an email and I can, share more information in an email if that's what you want me to do. Yeah, I don't know what the next couple of weeks are going to bring, but it sounds like there's a lot between kind of verbal agreements and a signed purchase and sale by the well, I closing think, or by the town meeting. But uh, I think this will go pretty fast, Dan. Great. We have a willing, I think we have a willing um, owner that's going to work with us. All right. Do you have anything specific you want me to ask besides does this, would this need to come back before town meeting, Dan? Um, I'll email you. I'm just not sure on the two thirds vote. Number one, I, it's just a procedural question, but it 
So these funds have already been allocated and are sitting somewhere else. Is that? Yes, that would they yeah. were allocated last town meeting, right? Yeah, at annual town meeting. Yeah. What we didn't have was a so I went back and I reviewed the article. Um, at annual town meeting, senior housing asked for CPA funds for a, a study and then our feasibility and then land acquisition. So the approval, I went back and I read through the minutes and the land acquisition, it says land acquisition. In this case, this article would be that piece of land. The piece of land that I would fill in the blanks for would be that piece of land related to the land acquisition. So the entire funding amount, that's where they would take the the funding amount. That's why Article 11 is mentioned because that was the article at annual town meeting that referenced land acquisition. I don't know that she's going to change any of that, but the last time I looked at something like that, it, there was a reference to an article when funding was, when there was some correlation between funding and a land, a land question, um, because the two things were about the same process is what I, is what I thought. And it, it really went back to the Previer land. Sure. Um, okay. Well, we, we'll have more information um, this week, I would think. Um, I texted Lisa. I'm going to try to talk to her in the morning. I just don't know what okay. time. So I'm going to ask her what time. I don't think we need, it won't take long to get us an okay. agreement once we um, negotiate. Okay. Um, article 12 is zoning. This is um, quite a lot, actually. This is a huge undertaking. So, Dan, what you see here in terms of language, the questions themselves are in the order that the planning board and Peggy Sloan from the COG, who did the technical assistance for the planning board, suggested. The first one mostly addresses the, and if you see it, it's written out in the question. I have not had a chance to talk to Lisa about this, but it is substantial because it's the entire chapter 179. So the entire zoning bylaw. And the intent in the first article, the way I understand it is to address the inconsistencies and update the sections that were that weren't consistent in the prior in the pre previous versions, but also provide a new official zoning map. Um, because if you make changes, you have to address it in the map. And so what the planner at the COG did was she referenced all the sections instead of including all the language. Um, and there's a packet here in the town hall and one that you can look online to see all of those cha proposed changes. So the hearing on this particular article, or actually the hearing for all three of these, is Monday. Yeah, so it's section 40. When you say all three, what does that, that mean? So really, there's, there's three things here. There's the zoning bylaw in its entirety that needed to have the inconsistencies ironed out. But then yeah. as part of the zoning bylaw, you have the conservation subdivision and the floodplain. Oh, and well, okay. What okay, they so the next three articles, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the, the explanation I received about why we have three and the order they're in is A, we have three. So to the if one isn't is voted down, at least you have a chance to do the two other critical ones, which is floodplain and conservation subdivision, because we now have requirements on a federal and state lateral level that we have to meet. And so the changes in those two bylaw, those two sections of the bylaw are captured in this in these two articles respectively and the hand the handout will have some type of red line of what's changing oh, yes. it'll ha i think it'll have to that's why that's why i have a question for lisa on this one because normally she likes to see all of the language but it's an entire section of the bylaw it's, okay, it's, it's huge. over 100 pages and would would we be having these all printed up for the we you, would probably have to print it into the guide is what dan's asking this whole oh. thing no i'm not saying i'm just i'm just if people are going to say, what are the changes? I don't know how anyone answers that question. So yeah. Exactly. How, it's how can you do this, Dan, extent. otherwise? The, the, the document that, that Trevor and Carolyn were holding up is actually the 
document that's going to be reviewed and it does show red line changes dan so yeah. i would think we would have to produce that based on my experience with lisa in the past yeah, it's massive. but i would have to confirm that with her um and is, this may be a complicated question hopefully not but so are they truly just inconsistencies and in updating section numbers or are there any substantial changes at least under article 12 to any of the zoning sections? Well, the floodplain district actually, um, I just checked, it is in compliance with the state and federal um, new requirements, and that is actually substantial. Um, yeah, I think 13 and 12, I, I kind of get it, but I just didn't know in 12, I'm sorry, 13 and 14, which is floodplain and conservation, but in 12, are is it just cleanup or are there substantive changes to any of these sections that people may there were a couple of things that Lisa Lisa and I looked at and flagged when we started looking at this, when we first saw it. So if you would like, I would be happy to send you that email stream. Um, but I do think, I wasn't part of a conversation between the chair and Lisa, but I do think they had a conversation. So it may be worthwhile to have Lisa address that herself at, it, as part of what she's already looked at. Um, because she was a little concerned at first as well. Uh, but I know they had a conversation and it was my understanding, having talked to the chair, that Lisa's concerns were ironed out. So to your point, I think you need to hear that directly from Lisa. Well, okay. because yeah. she, would, she would make that estimation. All, you know, all I'm saying is if they're just numbering changes and cleaning up some references to the wrong numbers and things, that's I don't, easy to explain to the town, but if there's substantial changes, I think people need to understand what they're voting on. And right. I do also, think, so that whatever the changes are, are all gone undergone legal review as well. Is that fair? Or? Oh yeah. So the Lisa's already taken one pass at this. Um, what we were, the reason I put this language in is I want her to look at it, the language mm -hmm. of the article requests, but she's going to be looking at it again once they go through the hearing process, that final language. Um, okay. she would look at. So yeah, if you think, if you want to hear back from her, whether they're, I can't well, say that I'm not a lawyer. Then I'm, I don't feel like I'm qualified to say whether it's substantial or not, Dan. I'm wondering as an example, when I look at zoning parking lot design, you know, what's in red says C section 3300 parking areas should incorporate low impact development techniques to manage stormwater to the maximum extent feasible. It should like, hey, you should look at this or shall is like you have to. I'm, I'm just wondering how much um, is being required of people to, I mean, must it be low impact? Or well, uh, like all of the kind of, you know, these things have been added. Parking parking should be located to the side or rear of the lot to maximize extent feasible and um you know, a special permit in addition to parking areas shall include one electric vehicle parking space um so are they are they these parking lots must have a have a ev charging i'm just wondering how much as he as he was saying like how much is just a little bit and how much is like these are new requirements that we're telling you you must have an ev charger in your parking lot so to some extent the planning board has to address that yeah okay but i hear what you're saying dan so i'll write myself a note yeah, I, I'm saying exactly what Trevor is saying. I, I just, I know we've done our best at these special meetings to to publicize them and be well attended, but I, I'm not a huge fan of substantial zoning changes without a full town vetting of them. So that's just always concerning. Okay. That, well, but, I will say they did have an information session. They had it yeah. the 11th of September. They've actually had a couple. They've gone through this more yeah. than one, Stan. I can't speak to how you would feel about it but i do know they were trying to prepare for being able to explain this to people yeah 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 it's not yeah it's not how I, it's just right it's just great to have as much participation as possible as often as possible but yeah okay all right um article 13 is the conservation subdivision which is more substantial just like the floodplain article 14. I think is why it's a separate article, Dan. There's separate articles and there's compliance things that we have to be able to address. That's 
one of the reasons they're two separate articles. The key one about the floodplain is the changes that are in the bylaw in the draft that you would see are, they are substantial, but they're also requirements that are federal and state. In order for us to qualify for flood insurance and for residents to qualify, we have to have these changes in our bylaws. And so to the extent that they were trying to strategize, that was the reason they wanted to see these two sections separate. We also have to have our these updated in our hazardous mitigation plan. Otherwise we get no grants. So uh, there are some reasons right. behind it. I'm just not familiar with what they all are. Well, I could certainly, I think, so Peggy Sloan's gonna be at the hearing on Monday. I think they have a, and I haven't seen it, but I think it exists. I think they have a an explanation of what they are. So to your concern, a PowerPoint would certainly help explain some of it. I, I think in my yeah, Pete, in my mind, you know, federal and state requirements required for grants, those are easy explanations. But if there's just kind of uh, decisions being made on some of the other articles based on internal discussions, I just think it's important that we kind of are able to identify what those are. And but okay. requirements with state and federal law, that's those are easy to understand and. That the makes reason sense. why it's important to vote for this is um, because our brick grant deadline is um, for submission is November first. So if we have an, we can then say we have an updated floodplain or we voted it. So that's kind of important. Okay. All right. So I just wrote myself a note. I'll check in with Denise about it. Okay. Um, then Article 15 is um, Snowberry Court and Greylock. Yeah. Did did we get all of the requirements for? In fact, there's council is going back and forth. There's some requirements that council had sent out um, okay. in a letter, and so that's being addressed. And in fact, I was watching it go through my email today. Okay. So that has to be ironed out before town meeting, if I understand correctly. Okay. Are we close to? Um, we provisionally approved that, providing yes. the lawyers got that together. Yes. And that's what they're doing is they're working the language out in the deed. And the okay. um, I think the easements reflected or weren't, re there were some things that were reflected and some things that weren't, but I can't, I'm not the lawyer. I stopped, I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> and I, um, on this particular one, I, I would express to the town at the meeting that I, I don't represent the association, but I've been assisting the prior developer with the developer is assisting the association. The association has their own counsel. I represent the developer, so I have some involvement. So I don't I don't think it's a level that I would abstain, but I do intend to just kind of stay out of it and uh, make that statement at the beginning. If anyone does have an issue with it, I'll step away and we'll figure something out for a temporary moderator. But okay, fine. That doesn't seem. I, much. I wouldn't see those too. I don't think there's really any issues, Dan, but yeah. Yep. Just want to be transparent. So yep. Yep. That's good. And so placement is really has has changed a little bit, not substantially, although I did move the um vote to accept or the request to accept Snowberry and Greylock to the end of the warrant. Um it's a hostage move. Well, to some extent. I don't know. You're trying. You're talking about taking two roads. I know it's important, and it's important enough people come. So you know? I didn't know what, how you felt about placement, Dan, but that was something that I had talked to the board about. Over, I usually listen some to some extent. If there's a suggestion strategically, yep. Um, I usually will go through that as part of Casey, revisions. It's fine. I just wanted it last because we have to have a quorum. And I didn't want everyone lift, leaving and then not have a quorum. So yeah. And I think other than zoning and maybe a little bit on the um tilt I don't anticipate it being a long meeting. So I think people can be patient. Um yep. Yeah. I don't I think the zone again, has, a, if if the yeah. planning board has a good presentation, it should be pretty straightforward. So to that question, Dan, would you entertain them doing a five-minute presentation? The planning board? Or, or would you want to talk to, since, since to your 
to your credit and and in as your in your capacity as the moderator you want to see you want to make sure that people are properly informed um would you want them to do some sort of an outline kind of like what julie does with the budget at town meeting For the i'm just asking just because i yeah i mean i think part of that is tricky i mean i i think that uh lisa commenting will be as important I, I think people just need to understand maybe both but i think lisa needs to explain what's substantial and what's just required if we want to proceed with state and federal money and grants those are but um the planning okay. board may be able to give a good explanation but i think the town should understand if we're making changes to our zoning that based on a particular decisions on the board or, or what's going on so okay so yeah Three All minutes right. sounds better your than five. Is your hesitation maybe we would hold it until the, the annual town meeting if it was sub substantial? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, but understood either way. Yeah. And on 15, I don't I don't want to get into it too much, as I said, because I'm a little bit involved, but some of the emails today talked about maybe a site plan having to be modified. So oh. I don't know if that's going to be done on time, but I I don't, we're still talking through that, but if there has to be additional survey work or site plans completed, I, that finding a surveyor to do it that quick may be ambitious, but okay, yeah, we'll see. All right. All right. So I'll have to address that with Lisa. Okay. Anything else, Dan, you see that? Wants to no, this is great. I appreciate it. And it's great to be able to, to chat and chat through it. So. Yeah, I appreciate your help. And Thank you for coming to yeah. make sure that we Thanks for having. are on the sure. same page. All right. Um, okay. Thanks again, Dan. Have thank a great you. night. I'm going to sneak out. So thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks for everything. Bye. Take care. Um, did you, uh, you know, I haven't formally been appointed for the School committee, yeah. Oh, would you like to know how we're doing that? We're yeah. doing that on Wednesday. Fine. Next week. Okay. I'm so I'm still gonna go to the joint meeting, I think, tomorrow. Um yeah. I'll just sit in the back. But so I went to the meeting the other night just to try and be there for their meetings. Oh, they, okay. Have, this I, I asked meeting. I asked Darius if we could have a joint So that was one of the things week. Carolyn and I did on Friday. Um a joint she asked to for... set up a meeting with Darius and Darius. the school committee. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell him. Oh no, it's okay. Um, no, I what? forgot to tell him too, Carolyn. Oh, a meeting with oh with them? Yeah, because you have to it has to Got be it. a joint meeting. So Got it has it. to be a joint okay. meeting, it has That's to be a joint it, it has so to like, be a roll call. Like vote. we did with the planning board. Oh. Similar, okay. except there was an extra yeah. step. I don't remember doing that before. We do that with like I don't think you guys have had to appoint very you did with the planning board. You did do that. We do that. We did the joint. Yeah. No, I'm fine with whatever. I I don't I'm care. Just I like, just I'm I'm really sorry. I'm no, I forgot to tell him to care. We were just trying to, trying to make sure it could happen. And yeah. then I realized there's an extra step you have to I just take wanted with school to make committee. sure someone was there for the budget. Yeah, well, I've been sitting in just listening and not voting or anything like that, just sitting in and so I know so what's happening. So you're the official but on wednesday fine that's fine i'll go to tomorrow night's meeting anyways but i'll just sit okay sit there so there was a notification process we had to go through and i fine. checked in with darius and made that happen yesterday that's afternoon fine. before i forgot um that works. and he also has the link so we did a separate posted notice to say that this is going to be discussed um we have to do our regular postings for the regular meetings but i did a separate posted notice just because that's what the Fine. law requires. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for Scott, that. I am really that's sorry. No. There's so she and I strategized. I just didn't write it all down. There's just so much going on. I completely. Yeah. I, I mean, I walked out and completely forgot. That's okay. I'm sorry. Totally fine. I just want to make yeah. sure that well, people so you're in for to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will oh, for a okay. while. Yeah, until. Well, I that's what I told Darius. I said it was just yeah. interim until we could find somebody. But mm -hmm. I said it's terrible not to have anybody. No, we definitely need to be. You know, there for the budget, and I don't know if they're going to have negotiations or whatever. But um, okay, that's going to be coming up. Um, okay, I could report a little bit on the maybe. Did I tell you about the school roof? I mean, the frontier roof. No. So they're they're looking. What well, I was not at a meeting here because they're having a. Um, we're looking at a plan on the capital committee. The the, the tennis courts and pickleball courts are Beautiful. phenomenal. Aren't they Beautiful I seen job. Them. I want to commend Darius and the and uh, the school committee there that did 
and whoever did the work uh, did an amazing job. They, you know, kind of rounded out the corners and cleaned up the landscaping and painted it all out. And I know, like, I think Sarah told me last night, everybody was, I mean, every pickleball court was full. They were all having a great time. And I think I'm sure for tennis as well. So great job on that. So we're also looking at other capital projects that need to happen. And the school, the roof is, is the biggest and there's obviously multiple roofs there and all different ages. And so we we're looking at different methodologies of either a liquid lay down or um, putting insulation and another like a rubber roof over the top of it. And so um, we're trying to decide what what which way to go and what color it would be, because depending on if we'd put solar on it or not. And so there's a lot of discussions on that, but we're working our way through that to make a recommendation of school committee. And, and I think we'll do like, we have enough funding for like, it's under 500,000 from that initial vote we had. And I think we can get two larger sections done that are the worst sections that are leaking right now. So that's moving forward on that front. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's it at the moment. There are um, other things we need to address. Oh, I have a meeting. I'll set up a meeting with her. She texted oh, me. The last Lisa, I, I mean. I know Dan is gone, but I guess the last items that we may want to put on this town meeting would be a, as Casey had mentioned and talked about the other night was to put a borrowing uh article on there for um the roads because we may get it's not that we're not sure we'll get any money from the state we think that we will we don't know how much or when but the main issue is cash flow I mean the like today's warrant was two and a half million so we have a lot of money going out with not money coming in so we're worried when we get to December where we're going to be. And we and in December 8th, I think we need to... Um, That's the ban. We got to yep. redo the ban. So we thought, should we get authorization and do a debt exclusion and election uh, for, um, for borrowing for the roads until we get some money? Because we just don't want to run out of money. We're, we're trying to to get the um, bill tax bills out and uh, water readings out so we can get sewer bills out to try and get some cash flow. But right at that December through February is really a tough time. And if we run out of money, that won't be good. So I um, did talk to um, Casey Pease, who is today Paul Mark's um, staff. Yeah. And he and Joe are meeting with Karen Spilka, the okay. Senate president. We're trying to get going on a, a bill for everybody. Because there's nine billion of infrastructure money in the state. Well, that's what I kept saying. Um, but and then I talked to Natalie yesterday to find out what was going on with her, and she was meeting with um, the um, House President. Okay. Today. So they're working hard. So us. they're 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 really trying to get us. Oh, it's yeah. it's um, Conway, Deerfield, Ashfield, and there's one other community mm -hmm. in Franklin County. And then I'm trying North to Adams got whaled, but North Adams um, and I don't want to say Pittsfield, but mm -hmm. somewhere out by North Adams is were really bad before us. Right. Right. And then um, North Andover, they didn't meet eligibility. They had a lot of private. They damage. had a lot of all the stores. Downtown, yeah. Right they on had a lot of private right damage down. versus municipal damage. But yeah, the but they still didn't meet the federal yeah and lemonster and, and then then you had lemonster and fitchburg and lemonster and fitchburg have they still do not have they were supposed to have totals for fema on to, on monday when i talked to them last week um but they even though they work through the weekends they still did not have final totals the other uh so but they don't look like they're going to be eligible well, either so we uh, the they are going to put a bill together because there's, you know, across the state, there's a wide range of communities that are really hurting. Speaking to this issue, and I'm hearing it more and more, I really think that um, Senator Warren and Senator Markey real and, and our, our federal, um, you know, federal representatives, McGovern, should really look at climate change and the federal declaration because they always hang it on one event it needs to happen within like one day two but day yeah it's a two-day two, period one, one day event. period yeah. but the 
The problem with climate change is that the climate doesn't work like that. It's not a one day event. It's not, I mean, you understand if it's a hurricane and it comes up through and lasts several days, that's obviously a thing. But, but with the way our weather works now, it is like every two weeks, all this summer, it was two weeks, every Friday, then Monday, then Friday, then Monday, it was like a constant cycle for about a month. And if you group those together, we certainly surpass the amount needed for federal declaration. And I think when they're looking at climate change and looking at ways that they you know, fund this stuff, they need to look at how they declare a federal disaster and what that threshold is. Because sure, you know that $12 million is nothing when you're looking at federal money, but for a town who has a you know, $12 million annual budget and 70% goes to the school, you're trying to run the whole town on 4 million bucks a year, and you have a $4 million, $5 million wipeout of roads over a three-week period. It's it, just... It, it, Trevor, it's more than that. There's uh, over 100 spots that are damaged yeah. and that we aren't fixed for winter. Right. We haven't solved Pine Nook at the, the bottom. You're right. We haven't we haven't even touched River Road. Mm -hmm. River Road is, and Wapping Road and Wapping Road and Hoosick Road are yep. disasters. And River Road is a multi million dollar project that I can't even you know Anything trying to get that's going to go again, uh, right? And uh, and we're trying to figure it out. I'm trying to get a 604B, and I went to the you know I've mm -hmm. I've, I've I've got everybody on board saying that we're a priority watershed now so we can we can apply but the problem is now they have this social justice mm -hmm. community requirements and you know from the last time when i was involved in one with montague it was pretty straightforward now it's more we complicated need justice i know we said so, it before but it's not just social justice and it is also rural justice and how I rural know. communities are you know, but it's just do not have the but, infrastructure or the well resources. Or the resources but or this the is an population. eighteen month just to get the planning grant. You know, you're applying in yeah. November. It they've got to review it. It's awarded. It's a you know eighteen months. Yeah. Then you apply for a three nineteen implementation grant. That is multi year again. I mean, you're still talking about three to five years before we can get River Road fixed. I hate to say people are in government that long either. You know, people know. come in, you have a three-year term, or you have a, you know, maybe people run twice I know. and they're out again. Or, like, you know, for some consistency, you need people that or, or be, the, in interest, be in government long enough to be able to see something like that through. I know. Well, for this recovery is is seriously a three to seven years. Yeah. And all we're talking about is trying to get enough cash to, to get us out through the beginning yeah. of this process so that the roads are open. Yep. And they're not even all open yet. No. And that's what I'm... Conway's in the same boat. I know. So anyway, we're... Okay. And then the last item would be, and I know you're going to talk with Lisa about yep. this, is the wastewater borrowing of that last... So the wastewater notes. borrowing, there was a question about whether the notification was proper. And I, for the, it's a long story. It's a long, long story. It's a but long Lisa story. It's kind of fine. But Lisa, bond well, Lisa had asked questions. a question because bond council asked a question. Right. And I had tried to circle back around to her. Um, I need to ask her again tomorrow. Yeah, she's, she's been so busy tonight. So for two reasons. So you've got this question about the road repairs mm -hmm. and then uh, the $3 million. We need to know if there's any problem with that request, right, that request so tomorrow. those are the two things that i have notes besides besides the other thing if i have a chance i may ask about why we have those license fees so high yes um, that's the chris and chris and cassie wanted to understand directly from lisa um yeah. it's a question of whether we can get everybody in the same room fast enough okay so we may have to hold off on that question for a day or two until yep. we can that's fine. Uh, to get the the two other questions answered. So yeah. are you um are you speaking of sewer treatment plants, are you able to give the scope of work and uh the bill to um Matt Sheehy? Chris hasn't Chris Wester is the guy I've been talking to. I haven't heard a peep from him in three days. And I sent him two emails. 
So we're waiting for Chris to get it. Chris has to sign the contract. He ha- he was okay with everything. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't signed it. But he it hadn't yet. signed it. Okay. So that's why I just so sent him another signed, email today about it, asking if he was. It on to okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we were all set on the language after I fixed my problem. I think they I think they want to well, have a discussion with their trustees. Correct? Right. I was just going to say about the cost. And the cost is for the NMH is trustee meeting. So I, I'm pretty sure DA What's the is trustee? trustee meeting. It's got to be any day now. It's, any day now? Okay. It's got to be this weekend, this weekend or the or next, next week's weekend. Yeah. Because uh, the NMH one is this weekend. Okay. So even if we got them a one that wasn't signed, just so they have Yeah. Can you just oh, wants to see the contract too? Well, it's because I'm, he needs to, I mean, he's talking about expenses and he stuff. And so the scope we're probably. asking them to pay for this peer review. Right. So you want to, we want to send him a bill for, um, or show him that it's twelve thousand eight fifty. So make sure you send him that, and then also the scope of work. So that's in the we try to incorporate most of that into the contract. Great. Uh, it, so great. If, if the guy is going to sign it, it's fine. But just if you could send him the scope of work, okay, and the a bill, so that they can give us. The twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, why would why not just have that money mm-hmm. so that we can just forward it to it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So I just need to go back and look and see if Chris has responded to me because he hasn't. So if you could send that out, that would be great. Just CC me so I I know that it went out. Okay. Well, what I can do is I can also say to him, I can tell Matt what was the holdup for me. Um, that Fine. way I can CC you and you'll know what's going on too. No, that's all right. You don't need to, all you have to do is just send them the scope of work and the bill. You don't have to explain it. It's okay. It's not, it's not our fault. If, anything you know, else? Um, I can't think of anything. Anything, Chris? You got anything? Casey? Anything? Just a Sweet. couple of mail items that are pretty insignificant. Oh yeah, I saw the Comcast thing, and uh, what was the, the other was? Um, well, uh, it's some educational materials that are potentially useful, but they're from the uh, Office of Campaign and Political Finance. Correct. Yep. I can't ask you guys for money. That's <laughs> pretty much. Right. Pretty much. Okay. Um. <laughs> so these are price increases. I, no, I think they're just channel lineups. Oh, okay. Deleting some, changing some. Is there money on there? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. They are, well, yeah. What, what my... there? Let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, stream. So these are things if you wanted. Uh, so there's um, Calm Life is changing to Zen Life. <laughs> in case you need a, a moment. Um, curiosity Stream uh, will increase in play. These are all like added apps, I think, that you can get through Comcast. So the curiosity stream is going from three bucks to five bucks. Um, via play will increase from five to six. Uh, midnight pulp, whatever. I don't know what that is. Uh, we may not want to know. No, uh, we don't want to know. Five o'clock, to, uh, five, five uh, dollars to six dollars. Um, oh, and then it's annual from fifty dollars to sixty dollars. Uh, same with stream box, that will go from five to seven. For fifty dollars to sixty bucks, so that's it. Those are video and on-demand changes. And then uh, all subscription stuff. And then this is all. This is required Finance. for. Finance. What's this monthly training for Zoom platform? <sighs> is there monthly? Yeah. They want monthly, or they offer it. Uh, overarching goals, educate public on campaign finance. Well, thank oh, you for printing, you. Thank you for printing yeah. all this out, Chris. I'll have to look at it. Sure. That's good. <sighs> okay. All right. Anything else? So we're going to leave the warrant open until we clarify to these two questions. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm yeah. on the right path. Till, till yeah. Wednesday, yeah. So if we have to talk about this Monday, even as early as Monday and definitely on Wednesday, um, it's fine. I just want I that's yeah. I just yeah. want to make sure that we Chris, you and I have to remember to make sure we put it on an agenda. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. We have to post tomorrow too. Yeah. Sure. That's fine. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. Motion uh, to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you all. Thank you.